Well, today you can see we're doing something a little different. Uh, I just turned on the TV and nothing. It won't do anything. For the last few weeks, I've been watching lines of LEDs burn out. Uh, I lost one, I lost two, and then I lost them all. And the TV is actually still powering on. Uh, it's just the LEDs in the back that have burned out. So today I have some new LEDs. We're going to try to put them in. I got to a point where I thought, well, if I'm going to buy a new TV, Anyways, I'm probably still going to spend the money and try to fix the LEDs in this and see if I can't get it to work for the shop. So I figured, what the heck, I'll try to fix it first. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we we'll buy a new TV. But I was going to try to fix it anyway. So let's dive in, pull it apart, and see if we can't get the lights working on this. So by taking a flashlight, you can actually see that it is powering up and the... Uh, Roku portion is trying to work. So the TV works, even the stereo system recognized it and powered up. So it's just the LED backlights that are out. All right, I've got the TV off the wall and I put it on the kitchen table, uh, face down at first because the back needs to come off. There's a whole bunch of uh, different size screws. So I got some tape to label which ones they were. And once all the screws are out, you just kind of pop the back off the bottom had some clips and I just needed to pull a little bit harder and even if I broke some clips there's plenty of screws to hold it together. Uh, first thing once the back's off is the speakers need to get unplugged and then the trim for the bottom of the speakers is going to come off and that was uh, six screws and then it peeled away uh, to expose the infrared remote connector and that connector was really difficult to get to because the latch is upside down so it can't really be accessed so I just had to kind of pry and bend and there's that latch that faces the wrong way. Next up is to get the main screen driver connectors undone and these are the flip up latch style. Once you flip up the latch the ribbon just kind of slides up and out and I do both of those. Now the tricky part is to pry this board off of the frame of the TV. And mine was held on using double-sided adhesive. I've seen other models that use screws. So I used a plastic prying tool and just gently put pressure on that double-sided adhesive until it finally released. Being careful not to damage the board in any way because that would be it for this TV. These are those double sided pads. There was five of them that I had to pry away. And this is that plastic pry tool I used. And I'm just going to repeat the same process for the other side. And on my model, I needed to remove the buttons so that I could access the tape underneath them. And at this point, they're just taped on. The screw was already removed when we remove the back. And then it's a connector, and that's out of the way. And here's that tape I needed to peel back. And underneath that tape is some sort of silver tape, which I suspect is a ground to dissipate static electricity from the screen. So we'll just carefully peel that out of the way. And now I need to go around the entire edge and unscrew the bezel. You can do this before or after flipping the TV over on its back. Uh, I was just rolling along and diving right into the screws. So now it's time to flip the TV over. Um, I use some wooden blocks and put them underneath the standoffs for the rear TV mounts. Uh, the rear TV mounts sit higher than all the other module boards, so it would only be sitting on those four standoffs. Making sure that those electrical boards are out of the way, the bezel comes right off now that I already have the screws out. And next, I tried to peel the screen up, but the screen is stuck down to this other bezel. Uh, that's on the edge. So I thought maybe the screen needed to come out with this bezel and this bezel is just held down with little clips so I used a pry tool to move that up and It kind of the screen kind of peeled away from that secondary bezel 
in some spots and then in other spots uh, that bezel was double-sided adhesive to the screen so it came off. I didn't use a suction cup tool like you might see in other demonstrations. Uh, I just used some rubber gloves and grabbed the LCD screen from behind so I wouldn't get any grease or oils or anything on that screen. Uh, I moved it off to the side in the kitchen counter on a towel and now I need to get the uh, diffusers and I believe there's a polarizer in there. So it's very important to take note of how these uh, sheets go in and not get them turned around. Now you need to pull off the rear diffuser uh, little sheet but it's held in with these plastic clips and they have to be released from underneath. I didn't get a good shot from underneath of releasing those but they're just two tabs that you squeeze and then those come right off. Uh, the center ones, the tabs are actually underneath this board so I had to flip the TV back over, remove the board and once I had the board removed, um, I just went ahead and squeezed and released those tabs and those tabs just kind of dropped uh, down underneath the TV there. And since those tabs are kind of a one-way deal, they just push in and click and lock. Uh, I went ahead and put the board back knowing that I can just push in and lock those tabs when I'm all done with the repair. So this is me putting the board back in. And now we're flipping the TV back over. At this point, it's just a frame. There's no screen or anything, so I felt confident doing it myself. And that rear diffuser screen comes off so that we can access the LEDs. Okay, the LEDs are held in with uh, about a million screws on my model. So I just went around removing all the screws. Once those are all off, uh, it's also double-sided adhesive in, so I needed to pry those uh, LED strips up with, and again, I just use my plastic pry bar to get underneath that double-sided adhesive. And it's a little bit time-consuming, but uh, it all comes apart very easily. Okay, and here are our replacement uh, LED strips from shopjimmy.com. They come pre-packaged in this nice roll. Uh, there's two parts, uh, seven each, and they are labeled right and left, so I needed to be pay attention to the uh, orientation and which part I was putting in where. So the first one I believe was the right and it plugs in and then I just need to align the screw holes. One thing on these replacement ones is they do look different and they didn't have the holes drilled for the alignment tabs in the metal frame. But in the end they worked out just fine. So I'm just going to continue installing those right hand ones that plug into the actual harness. Here's a look at that connector. And you can see I'm lining up what screw holes uh, exist on the new ones. Now here's a look at the left hand one. It just plugs into the right hand one and everything lines up perfect. So the replacement parts were a good match. Now I've got them all in and I went ahead and did a test power up and sure enough it works just fine to my surprise. Uh, I, when I first plugged it in and pushed the button it didn't work right away and I remembered the Roku TV is trying to boot so I had to give it a second to uh, make it actually turn on. Now that it's on I know it's working. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, actually only about half of the um, screws that came out because the replacement ones weren't drilled for all of the screw holes. I believe that they fit other models. Um, and this is an LG panel from what I can uh, find in my research. And so there are a lot of different LG panels that uh, would use different screw locations. So now I'm going to put the rear diffuser sheet back in, make sure it's clipped in around the edges, and then I can just push my little clear tabs uh, back in and lock that in. Now I'm going to put the diffuser panels and uh, there's three of them in there so I need to make sure that the orientation is correct and also uh, getting them all aligned properly because otherwise I don't think this is going to fit back together correctly. They all lock into tabs around the edge of the frame. And now I'm going to bring in the screen and again I've got my gloves 
and uh, it didn't seem to cause any damage to the screen. But the problem I found is that the screen doesn't slide on the diffuser tabs very well. It actually has like a static cling to the diffuser tabs. So it took a little extra time to get it lined up so that the bezel would fit back on. And this is a very critical alignment to making sure that your picture is going to look right and everything's going to go back together correctly. Once I have it aligned, I need to clip in that second bezel and uh, it also has to, the corners have to engage with each other. So just take your time and clip that all in. Now the top bezel can go in and it dropped right in and then I just clip it in around the edges. Now I'm going to put the screws back in that hold that front bezel all together and I found that I kind of needed to put some pressure down on the bezel so that it would fully sit flush with the uh, screen and not have any gap for the screen to move around with. So once those are in it's time to flip the TV back over and the first thing is to get the screen driver boards. Uh, put back on that sticky tape and then insert this card and I just push this ribbon in very carefully making sure that it's nice and square so all the pins will line up and then push that lock down. Now the buttons can go in and they're just held in with tape for right now and the, when the screen back goes on the screw will go through that. Uh, put the speakers back in and I found there's little tabs that had to align into the bezel and I need to remember to plug in my infrared blaster connector and then plug the speakers back in and that's it the rear cover can go back on and the rear cover just clips in at the bottom so I push that in first and get that clipped in making sure that it fits flushly all around and that it's all lined up. The first thing I did was start with the screws that I labeled with tape because I know where they're gonna go. So the buttons and then the rear connector input panel had different size screws. And you can see I just taped them all together. So with that, the rear housing is gonna be put back together and it is ready to hang back on the wall. Well, as you can see, it worked. The backlight fixed it. So now I can watch my favorite YouTube channels again. If this video helped you, or you just enjoy this kind of content, give me a like and subscribe for more content like this. We're always doing some kind of DIY project around the house, in the garage, fixing electronics. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next project.